Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome to today's episode of Stock Trading Pro. In today's Stock Market Live, we have a plethora of stuff we're going to discuss today. We have earnings kicking off in a big way with the financial stocks, which have been in the doghouse for the better part of the last year, maybe even a little bit longer than that. JP uh, Morgan Stanley did break out to new all-time highs roughly about two months ago, but the stock's been going straight down since then. We also have inflation we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about energy prices. We're going to talk about last week's CPI. Uh, we're also going to break down a little bit today how to hedge and use weak stocks as a hedge against some of the longer term long positions that you happen to have on right now. If you don't understand the term long, it's a very interesting uh, top uh, language that a lot of people don't know. So we're actually going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about long and we're going to talk about flat, <laughs> two active trading languages. So we got to talk about the best stocks to buy now in relation to earnings season kicking off. Some of them are in unique sectors that just kind of make sense while the stock market is taking a hit based on inflation and earnings and all these other things. Uh, it's kind of that flight to safety type conversation. So we're going to actually cover all of that right now. And there's two stocks in particular that I'm going to be looking to add as swing trades for new long. So we're also going to talk about long and flat and what that means in a second. So uh, stick around. We can be back in just one second. Okay, so thank you so much, everybody, for joining me here today. I really appreciate it. Today's Stock Market Live is obviously for educational purposes. It's up to you to make that final decision. Uh, just a quick poll. How's everybody doing in the markets uh, this month specifically? It's been challenging, but there's been a lot of opportunity. If you could type in the chat right now, let me know how you've been doing so far in April, April 2022. Has the stock market been treating you well uh, or is the stock market giving you some more gray hairs and you need to invest in some aspirin? <laughs> I know it's, it's either one or the other. I, for, for most people right now, it's not in between. And the reason it hasn't been in between is simply because do you have a process Leading up to let's let's actually go over to the charts. That'd actually, probably be a pretty cool way to do it. Um, heading on over here, we'll go over to the spy. There's a giant difference between what happened during the pandemic and what has transpired since January of 2022, which is let's say basically right here. Okay, so the big thing right now is if you have a process, if you have a structure for the way you look at the market, which in the way that we look at it is order flow, tape reading, optimal entry, those kind of things. And then the optimal entry and all those things lead to before you buy a stock, knowing your position sizing, your initial profit target, right? If you have all of those things as a part of your daily process, you're probably in pretty good shape right now. The only thing that really makes it challenging is when we have lack of volatility and stocks don't move. Um, but that's not the case right now. Right now, it's really plenty of volume, plenty of activity. Is, I think really at the top of that list right now is probably Twitter with Elon Musk and Twitter stock and all the volatility around that, which, by the way, that is a trader's dream right now, trading Twitter, especially a day trader's dream right now. Is it choppy? Depends on how well you're doing your game planning. That's really what it comes down to right now. And really the point that I want to get across, and, I, and I'm saying this as a friend, um, we are not in this stock market right now where you can just pop in and say, hey, guys, what do you got? what's everybody trading right now? This is the market where you will earn your stripes as a stock trader. And I'm not talking about whether you're a full-time active trader or, or if you have a full-time job and you're trading stocks on the side. Right now is when you will prove to yourself how bad you want to be successful as a stock trader, because that means you will do the extra work. You will know exactly what you plan to trade, how you plan to trade it, and anything that does not meet that criteria, you just leave alone. That is why professional traders right now are salivating over the current volatility, because there is plenty to do if you're prepared. If you are not prepared right now, you're probably getting slapped silly back and forth, like buying the highs, selling the lows, and you feel like you couldn't hit water if you fell out of a boat. So right now it's Monday. I like to have these kind of calls on Monday where we prep ourselves for the entire week. But mindset is actually one of the biggest parts uh, before you look for the best stocks to buy. Now you have to have the right mindset about profit targets. Some ideas right now, depending on the sector or the group that you're in right now, some of them are a little bit more cash flow where we're trading on the most recent time frame. Cash flow, again, that language of cash flow means that we are not looking to add to positions. We are more looking to exit a profitable trade at the first sign we see it slow down. We move up our trailing stop. 
Other groups of stocks, such as energy, which we've been talking about for a while, and if you happen to catch the sector rotation video that we did, uh, I'll just bring you over to this one. And we, you see this big line in the sand here. For those of you that know technical analysis, this is a big ascending wedge. But the weekly chart in the XLE is really the part that fascinated me the most as we kept getting up to this 80 level and it looks like we're going to punch through there uh, this morning. You can see uh, Chevron's actually up a uh, dollar at this point. It was actually up a little bit more before. Um, so what I'm saying and what I'm trying to get across right now is you really need to spend that extra time. And this is where you, you, you need to say to yourself, I am a money manager. And would I hire myself? <laughs> if the answer comes back a resounding, eh, <laughs> maybe, then you shouldn't be allocating money to the market until you start to take it a little bit more seriously. Because right now, this is a professional trader's market where if you have structure, if you understand order flow, if you understand what we call the one price and how order flow is trading around that one price in multiple time frames, and then finally get to the point where you understand the optimal entry, those three pieces basically form the basis of risk reversal, which then helps you with your initial position size, profit targets, and how much you're going to risk on those ideas. So look, if a lot of this stuff is new to you, that's good because now you're learning something that you might not be, have been done before. And now I'm hopefully going to be talking about elevating yourself up a little bit higher than just saying what's in play today. The other side of the equation is also talking about the possibility of hedging or just straight out short sales. So we're actually going to hop on over. We're going to take a look at those guys again. Obviously, uh, inflation, uh, you know, raise your, raise your hand right now if you've gone out to eat or bought anything right now and can't believe how expensive it is. It's absolutely crazy how expensive things are right now. We saw that in the CPI number last week. The stock market reacted negatively as expected. Things are just getting a lot more expensive right now. That's not going away anytime soon. The Fed has that ammunition, the, the FOMC has that ammunition where they could raise rates and it looks like it's going to be half 50 percent, uh, 50 basis points at the next one. That's also not going to be actually interpreted as a bullish. So last week we had bearish gaps and a bear flag and bearish earnings season starting. So what are we going to be thinking about right now? Well, you might have some longer term stocks that you bought. So let's get into that. Long means you bought stock. That means that long means you own the stock. OK, the other terminology that we want to use is flat. Flat actually has two different meanings for active trading. Flat means you got in and out of a trade at basically the same price. Flat also means, and this is very important if you happen to be on a trading floor, flat also means you don't have any positions on. So if you hear that in a trading community, or if you happen to be trading uh, as a professional trader on a floor and you're hearing it for the first time, flat means no positions. Flat means in and out at the same price. So we're going to work our way over into uh, how we're going to set up for this week. And that's really going to start over here with the map. And this is the last five days performance of the S&P 500. Now, the part that scares me the most or, or has me really, let me, let, me, let me rephrase that, scares me in the sense that the market is lining up to be a little bit more bearish right now. And it looks like we're getting validation on the bearish side. The big thing about the current earnings season that we are just launching right now, we'll take a look at some of the financial stocks that reported already, is that the large cap stocks have carried the load. They, they carried the load to the upside during the pandemic. They carried the load during that three-week rally we had to the upside after the Fed announcement, Apple probably being the top stock in that criteria. So we could just take a quick look at Apple right here. right? So Apple during this three-week run and other large cap stocks just took, took off to the upside. This is, this is where we really need to do a little bit more of a deep dive and take a look at the stocks that really move the market. And this is just last week's performance, okay? So if you do a little bit of a deeper dive into technology getting a hit, communication services, which is obviously part of technology as well, consumer cyclical is where people have that extra money to spend, also took a hit last week. Financials did not report well, did not report well. And then we work our way over here to energy, which is stuff that people have to spend money on no matter what. And then we have um, basic, uh, excuse me, consumer staples. So what we're seeing in the market, and this is really one of the biggest things to pay attention in the stock market. And we had a really good question about this the other day. Why is sector rotation happening? And I, I, it, I'm not sure I've ever gotten asked a question that, that simply, but it's a great question. 
why does sector rotation happen? And it really comes down to the economic cycle, the business cycle of what's going on in the world right now. Certain types of companies. Now, we're pulling ourselves out of just looking for the best stocks to buy now and actually taking a look at the companies. What type of companies perform well or perform poor in certain type of economic conditions? So low interest rates, technology stocks through the roof. Normally, financial stocks, as interest rates go up, do better because the margin on how they actually make money, which is the difference in the spread of what they pay for interest versus what they can charge for interest. It's kind of that markup. Normally, financial stocks do really well in higher interest rate climates. We had the inverted yield curve, so that put a little bit of a crimp in that, and rates really haven't started to rise yet. Now, what would be interesting is if these financial stocks started to rise prior to the higher interest rates going up, and we're not seeing that yet, which is interesting. So that means that there's a deeper underlying problem, which again, inverted yield curve and a couple of other things that are going on. So the financials are not exactly a no-brainer right now for looking for top stock picks. So what is? Well, we've had healthcare stocks. We've been talking about healthcare stocks. Hopefully, you've been watching those with us for at least the last five or six weeks. I mean, we've, we've really been on top of those. So just to give you an idea, so you can see over here the pocket of opportunity in the healthcare group uh, right over here. This is actually a week, but if we go out to a little bit more, you can see that this group over here has still outperformed. But what's super interesting now, and, and again, if you don't happen to know, uh, if this is the first time you're looking at finviz.com, a month in finviz.com is not a calendar month. It's the last 21 trading days. So basically the last four weeks, which is how a lot of active traders measure what they're looking at, which by the way, that's how they came up with the 20 period moving average being one of the most popular ones. The 20 period simple moving average basically represents the last four weeks of trading, not the last calendar month of trading. Although we do look at the calendar month too. With, that's a part of the, the uh, spreadsheet that we give out every night. So even going out to the last month, you can see Apple soared after the interest rate announcement. But over here, this pocket of opportunity in healthcare has been amazing. But what's not been amazing is this group of stocks, tech stocks. And really, I don't know if you've been watching NVIDIA right now, um, but NVIDIA is actually at this really big support level. And there's a lot of room to go below that. And this is really a good image if we take a look at what we were talking about before as far as bearish and bearish. We had a bearish gap, a bearish gap, bearish engulfing candlestick, bearish engulfing candlestick. And engulfing candlestick is usually a pretty powerful signal because if you take a look at this candle here, it took out the high and it took out the low and closed near the low. This candle as well took out the high, took out the low, and now it's resting at a support level. So here's the game plan for this week. Here's how I'm looking to approach this week of trading. And we'll actually tie this into the earnings that just came out this morning, uh, which is Bank of America. So Bank of America's quarterly profit fell. And then we bring it down here and we take a look at these guys, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, not good numbers either. So the longer term impact of the financial stocks not bouncing with the specter of interest rates going up is really interesting. So different firestorms are going off right now in the market. So let's get back to you. Let's get back to you personally. I had a bunch of people talk about that the market's been very stressful. David LeBate saying that. Uh, actually, you know what? This is actually a really good comment. Um, has been a good month, but 70% of cash. I don't know who you are, uh, Ral, Raylar Khan, but you know what? That's some pretty good trading. I have to be honest with you. A lot of people, especially when you get really excited about wanting to trade, you're like, I have to trade. I want to trade the markets. There's something going on. I need to be involved. That's a really advanced strategy, a really advanced mindset and good application of for the current market. So if, you, if the market doesn't make sense to you right now, maybe you don't have that full structure that you need. The smarter play is to be in cash. I, I Look, I'll just tell you straight up, paying attention is one of the most important parts of trading. And it was easily one of the most... Um, um, biggest mistakes that I made when I first started trading. I actually want to say hello to somebody this morning, Kathy Burns. Kathy was just in a recent boot camp. Hey, Kathy, good morning. Um, so the point that I want to get across here is you really need to say to yourself, okay, I hired myself as a money manager. Do the current market conditions make sense to me? Does it make sense? Do I strongly believe that if I buy a stock right now, there's a really good chance of my profit target being hit versus my stop loss? Listen to the answer, <laughs> because the, the first answer you give to yourself is going to lead to your conviction. 
Because remember, conviction and eliminating any doubt in a trade comes from believing your edge works over a large sample amount of trades, which means most of the time you're going to get follow through. If your answer comes back weak, that you're not sure if you're going to get follow through, do the smart thing, which again, this is a big part of these stock market lives, which is if I can show you the situations where it's amazing and we could size up and hold longer and those kind of things, that's awesome. But there's also other situations where the market's pretty tough. And the smart thing to do is either lower your position size, have a little bit of a tighter profit target, which in our we talk about trading for cash flow versus holding for a bigger move, and or doing nothing. But let's say we want to do something and what areas, what pockets of opportunity would we be looking for? So now we're going to translate that over into um, uh, sector rotation from last week, how that plays into this week, and then break down the top stocks going into today, Monday. By the way, I just want to thank everybody um, for who typed in honestly about how their trading was uh, and has been since January and, and specifically over the last few weeks in April. Because look, if, if you do not have a rock solid game plan, a rock solid structure of what you're looking at, that means everything looks the same. And this is something I really like for you to write down. If everything looks the same, that means you don't have an edge. And if you believe the market conditions are just perfect and you just should be buying right now, that means you don't have an edge. There's pockets of opportunity. Twitter, for example, especially on the day trading side of things with the Elon Musk conversation, Twitter stock has just been really good to be on both sides of the tape. We've made arguments for being long as a buyer. We've made long arguments for being short as an active day trader. I'm not carrying it overnight. I want to be clear about that. There's too many stories on both sides of the market. I'm not looking to carry Twitter as a swing trade just because one story can have that thing explode or implode uh, in either direction, but it's amazing, amazing from an active trading perspective. So what I'm really trying to get across to everybody right now, you don't have to trade. And I know that sounds weird. We're on a YouTube channel right now talking about the best stocks to buy now. And I'm going to give you a couple of them. And you want to write these down, AEM and NEM. We'll take a look at those stocks in a second. Um, do yourself a favor. Before you hit that buy button, ask yourself, am I hoping this moves in my favor or have you built a really good argument for why you believe it should move in your favor? Something that's not talked about enough, and maybe we'll talk about it a lot more here on this channel because this is really more of a mindset thing, is when you learn how to not lose money, it becomes easier to learn how to make money. But you first need to make a big list of what does not absolutely work. It's a critical part of trading. And it's one of the first things I taught everybody when I had my office in New York City is tell me what you're doing now before I introduce you to my strategy so that we can get rid of all of those picking tops. And like we actually had a question today that's in our, in our coaching call this evening um, in reference to trying to short sell strong stocks with just a little bit less share size. So, for example, let's take a look at Caterpillar from last week. If you didn't happen to be watching Caterpillar on the day trading side of things, um, Caterpillar had a bunch of melted candles for a long period of time, but then Friday unroll, unraveled, and this is the way it looked on Friday, and it was an amazing opportunity for day traders on Friday, and we kept calling it out. The challenge here, though, is you start to validate in your mind, well, it's gone up too far, too fast. I'm going to look to trade it in the other direction because it's gone too far, but that's a horrible trade. It's an absolutely horrible trade. Our job is to track and piggyback the smart money and just look for a spot to get involved with them, manage risk, and look for the upside. Short selling a strong stock sounds smart because there's a lot of room to fall, right? But it's a dumb trade. <laughs> I'm saying dumb very emphatically because I've done it before in the past and I don't do it anymore because it's not the, it's not the most repeatable way to see your account grow. Write this down. Tracking and piggybacking the smart money and sector rotation in the direction of an obvious market is by far the easiest way to position yourself to make money on a predictable basis. And look, let's face it. Isn't that what we all really want here? Let's not talk numbers. Let's not talk all of that kind of stuff. What we really want deep down is we want consistency and we want control of the outcome. Those are really the two things. If you talk to any active trader who's been trading for a while, the single biggest thing they want is predictability in how much money they're going to make consistency in the amount of money they make, and they want control over the outcome. But what's interesting, all three of those things come from you if you sit down and develop an edge. 
So let's walk through what an edge looks like and how that's translating into the current market conditions. So if we take a look at last week's sector rotation and we work our way down, over the previous 21 days, we're actually looking pretty good. And as we've been talking about, healthcare and consumer defensive have been pretty good. And those stocks specifically, we've been looking at Costco in the uh, consumer defensive, and we've been looking at uh, Walmart, which continues to punch right into new all-time highs. So as long as this remains intact, which you can see we've had now well bid here in Walmart, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, five out of the last six into this inside week. And I believe Costco might even be a little bit stronger there. You can see the strong uptrend in Costco and paused last week. On the healthcare side of things, if we go back over to the uh, J&Js of the world, which by the way, J&J actually has earnings tomorrow. If we go in Bank of America today, you can see this is for the current week. Uh, but tomorrow is actually Johnson & Johnson, Lockheed Martin, Halliburton, and Netflix after hours, which is going to be the big one as far as um, tech to kick it off. Uh, John actually brings up a good point here as well. Uh, we have actually been watching Philip Morris for a while. So remember what we said before. I want to go back to the um, to the map about this. So this is the last month, right? What we've been looking at here in consumer defensive, we've also been paying attention to the stocks that might be uh, reacting to people having a little bit more stress, so to speak. And Philip Morris actually has been one that we've been watching in the community. And I'm, I want to give you a heads up on this because this when I you know when I tell you to take a screenshot, it's because it matters that significantly. Philip Morris has actually had a bunch of bearish price action, but then as the market got worse, a bid came into this market. And now last week, especially on Thursday, was resting perfectly above a big level, which was the 50 period moving average. So if you know anything about Dow theory, which is a very long stock market method of looking at the market where you have the long term trend, intermediate term trend and the day to day fluctuations, the way that we use Dow theory, the 50 period moving average, anything above that. I'll consider looking to buy anything below that. I'll consider looking to short sell, which we'll talk about that in a second using a hedge for our long opportunities. Um, Philip Morris. And again, this is one of those stocks that you want to take a look at and print this out is here. So we had bearish gap, bearish gap, pause, bearish gap, and then a big exhaustion to the downside. Now we actually have what we call a one, two, three bottom here. But this pause here above the 50 period moving average with room to go is a really clean price action. And actually, if we drop this down on the hourly, you can actually see how clean this hourly chart is as well. We actually rallied uh, hard and kind of paused a little bit over here. So if you know about anything that we do, we basically don't want to go through any price action. So both the moving averages and the trend line are all still in place. Now, the one big thing to keep an eye on, obviously, is you want to know when something is stuck in a box. And that's really the level that we were looking for it to get through. And it did. So something else I want to point out right now, the bank stocks, they're getting hit. They're all in bearish activity. The technology stocks are getting hit. They're all in bearish activity. But there are pockets of opportunity. So we're looking at uh, healthcare stocks. We're looking at metals and miners. And let me specifically give you those ideas right now. And if we go back over to the daily charts, we've been taking a look at AEM and NEM. Okay, so they look very similar. But when we take a look at those um, ETFs, the sectors that run there, so XME or GDX, you start to find some opportunities. Now, that's the more obvious opportunity in the basic material area. But we also want to take a look at the basic materials itself, which is the XLB. Uh, one of the favorite stocks that we've been trading for a while, Alcoa, actually reversed a little bit. So XLB is now pausing just in front of this breakout level. So one of the stocks that was one of the stronger ones, which was pretty weak, this one, Alcoa, now is one I'm going to be watching to see, can we finally break this downtrend as metals and miners actually start to head back up to the upside? And you E broke out, and you E broke out last week as well. So those are some pockets of opportunity that we're looking at, basic materials, but more specifically, metals and miners. Financial stocks on the other side. So let's actually talk about trading those. We talked about using them as a hedge. So we don't necessarily want to hedge dollar for dollar because that ties up a lot of buying power. So when we're looking to hedge, we're looking to buy strong stocks and be long those stocks. But at the same time, with the increased volatility in the market, we can short sell weak stocks, which in this case would be certain technology stocks. We already gave you NVIDIA, AMD, and some of those kind of ideas, or financial stocks. 
So you would short sell financial stocks or buy puts on financial stocks. If they go down, they increase in value, but your longs will, will decrease in value if the market goes down. So your hedge is protecting your longs to a certain degree, not dollar for dollar, unless you can afford to do that. You could do the same thing with puts. Quick tip on that. Again, everything we do is for educational purposes. But if you're going to use options as a hedge against your long positions, make sure it's in the money options because they will move more dollar for dollar with the actual value of the stock price. If you try and buy cheap option, cheap put options way out of the money, it's not going to move to actually hedge that position. It would need to have a monster move, which is really like a lottery ticket. And we're not looking to do that. We're actually looking to straight up hedge them. Okay, so we want to keep going through the sector rotation and how this week is unfolding and where we're going into uh, this week. So you can see actually consumer defensive and healthcare. So again, that leaves clues consumer defensive, healthcare, utilities for a little bit, um, but energy. Energy started to work its way back up, and we showed you that on the longer term charts. So this was Thursday. We ended with energy having a big day, basic materials, consumer defensive, industrials. Now, what's interesting about industrials is they weren't really that active, but they carried the Dow for the most part on Wednesday and Thursday. So industrials, then we have Caterpillar, we have Deer, Boeing, all of those kind of things. But off, a little bit of an offshoot, which have been getting hit pretty hard, is UPS and FedEx. So if we take a look at those stocks out of that group of industrial stocks, Caterpillar right now and this breakout – is interesting. And if we go out a little bit longer time frame, you can see why it's interesting uh, right here and then boom into much, much bigger levels, which is basically all time highs. So Caterpillar is not that far from all time highs right now. So if we look at this from a relative strength perspective, if the XLI, and we, let me just show you that, that's the proxy that we keep a look on, XLI, is if this one finally gets back above and starts rallying, remember we said the 50 period moving average is that intermediate term line in the sand. This would need to reverse. So what we would actually need to see, that's a bearish U-turn, which is not good quite, so to speak. That's a bearish momentum reversal. So what we'd be looking for here is we'd be looking for the XLI to what we call well bid, which would be higher highs and higher lows. If that happens, then we can start to look for some other larger cap uh, um Industrial stocks such as Boeing, Lockheed Martin's coming out, Raytheon. You can see Raytheon's actually breaking out at this point. But two that are not necessarily in bearish order flow, which is FedEx and UPS. So now here's what we'd be looking at. We just gave you a bunch of ideas on the industrial side of things, looking to see success and order flow leaves clues. Sector rotation leaves clues. So we just saw that money is not rotating in, in a big way into industrials yet because the XLI is actually still below the 50 period moving average. So I sat up in my seat. I said, OK, Caterpillar had a monster move. So maybe we're just not seeing it in the bigger picture yet. But which other stocks in the industrial area can I look at that have relative strength? So we just looked at Lockheed Martin, LMT, and we also looked at Raytheon, RTX. So this week, because of that relative strength, I'm going to be looking at those three stocks not looking to buy the ones that have gotten beat up because smart money is not picking those up yet. So this is very important. Our job is to track and piggyback. We're not looking to be bottom fishers at this point. It's easier when we spot the rotation and say, okay, they've been doing it for a while. Let's just find a spot to piggyback until that changes, which brings us back to tape reading. That's the bigger challenge now is if it's a buying opportunity, how do we know when it changes? That's the last part of the equation because it's pick a side, then pick a spot. But how do you know when it, that side changes? And that's really the part about tape reading that you need to know. And probably the one most simple way of doing that is, is the stock still well bid or well offered? So if we go back over to the chart here of FedEx and we take a look at the weekly chart, this is well bid, which makes higher highs and higher lows. This is well offered on a weekly chart, which is lower highs and lower lows. Right now in FedEx, we actually broke down, landed at support, and traded into basically an inside candlestick. So there's really nothing to do here. But what we want to see in FedEx is this. We want to see FedEx have higher highs and higher lows, very similar to what we're seeing in these stocks that are already showing strength. Okay, So here's the thing. And, and let's let's talk about this honestly. Let's talk about this in a way that we're friends. Let's not talk pie in the sky. Let's talk real trading, okay? Those three stocks that I just gave you have already have bullish order flow. 
Those are the ones that I'm looking to be a buyer of because they're already exhibiting smart money behavior. How do we know that? Well, smart money, somebody with deep pockets is already pushing that stock up. There's no other way to look at it. Make your trading simpler. <laughs> if they're already doing it, they're already paying higher prices and they're taping, taking that big money and pushing it up and holding it there. That's what well bid means. Well bid means that they are paying higher prices and holding higher lows. Why in the world would we make things challenging and buy stocks that clearly have selling pressure, hoping they reverse versus saying, wow, that train's going in the exact direction that I want to get involved with. Let me just wait for that thing to slow down, which then we do on lower time frames, and find a spot to get back in in that direction. The reason I'm telling you this and the reason I'm spending so much time on sector rotation and exactly what that means is because there's opportunity right now. The traders that are struggling the most right now are not sure which opportunity they're pursuing. Are you day trading? Are you swing trading? Are you position trading? Are you investing? You need to know your objective before you know how to allocate your resources. You can't run a business without knowing what you're trying to accomplish. Once you know what you're trying to accomplish, then you kind of reverse engineer it like I just showed you, which is which order flow matters to you, which charts for reading the tape matter to you based on day trading, swing trading, position trading, or investing. Position trading is generally speaking between earnings reports. OK, so now I'm going to show you this again one more time. I want you to take a screenshot of this. This is the list of stocks that heading into this week. Uh, so you can see it's 418 and the top stocks that meet this criteria. We're actually going to break this down a little bit. It's about 22 stocks. But this is really the most important part here is when we break this down and take a look at the actual sectors, this validates what we just talked about. So remember, and I can't stress this enough, when you do the work. When you hire yourself as a money manager, which you are, if you're watching this right now, first of all, awesome. I really appreciate it. You have no idea. It's 730 in the morning, eight o'clock. You, you, you put, made this a part of your day because you want to improve your results. You want to improve the stocks you buy. Now, the next step is doing this after hours where you start to put a little bit more time into it. You schedule it and you're like, OK, I'm devoting an hour every day to being a money manager, which even think about that. You're only going to spend an hour on a side business that you want the unlimited upside. Got to work a little bit harder than that, but an hour is a great place to start, right? So now we're going to take a look here and break it down. You can see, as we just discussed, what we first saw on the map and then saw on the charts is now being validated by the strongest groups of stocks that we just talked about, industrials, energy, consumer defensive, and basic materials. So those groups of stocks are dominating. And look at the energy group right here, okay? This is how you go to the market every day with absolute conviction that you did your homework, you put together a good game plan because you know how you're going to run your trading business. And look, I, I can't say this strongly enough, you're running a trading business. If you opened an account, you're running a trading business, which means you have expenses and you have revenue. Your expenses are your trading losses, your software, all those kind of things. And those are accepted parts of running any business. It doesn't matter if you're Microsoft or Brian Ful uh, Byron Fuller here running a trading business. You have expenses and then you have revenue. If you keep your expenses reasonable while you're learning how to run your trading business, which means building your game plan, understanding your edge, doing sector rotation, doing market analysis, learning how to read the tape, finding the optimal entry, you're going to be in good shape because if you keep your expense is reasonable while you're learning how to use all of those things, then you'll be around long enough and have enough capital to understand how to make more when the market's good. That's really what trading is all about. So we broke it down by sector. We broke it down, gave you a bunch of ideas, long and short. We said we're going to be buying stocks that are already strong, metals and miners. Healthcare stocks, we're looking to catch a bid. Consumer defensive is still strong. We're looking for industrials to be perking up to the upside. On the short side of things, maybe hedging or just outright short selling, NVIDIA, some tech stocks, AMD, those kind of ideas. And then looking also at financial stocks, which have quite a bit of volatility right now, simply because of the earnings that are coming out. One last thing, obviously, on the day trading side of thing, Twitter. <laughs> Elon Musk has created a tornado around that stock right now. But I want to be clear, I'm only looking to day trade Twitter right now. There's no way in the world I'm going to put myself in a position where some kind of unbelievable news comes out on that stock overnight and I'm caught on the wrong side. This is the last thing I want to leave you with here today. 
Trading the news and trading the order flow are not the same thing. They're different strategies. Trading earnings and trading order flow are two different strategies. You need to know which strategy you're implementing at that time because then that will tell you how to position size and how to set your profit targets. Okay. Covered a lot of stuff today. I really want to thank you, everybody, for being here with me today. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we do these live streams, Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays. We come out with new educational videos. So if you're first time here, please do me a favor, smash that subscribe button, hit the like button if we gave you um, some good value today. Please watch this video more than once because we covered a lot of stuff. Some of it was stock picks. Some of it was educational. After you watch the video again, scroll down below the video and leave a comment about anything we talked about today. And I promise to get back to you as soon as I can. All right. Let's make it an awesome week. Hopefully you got a good rest over the three day weekend. Let's make it an awesome week. Let's stay on top of the order flow. Let's make trading easier. But to make it easier, you got to put that game plan together before the market opens. Have an awesome day, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I'll speak to you soon.